How can you be successful buying a house when it's a seller's market? Let's dive in. I'm Scott. And I'm Lane. Welcome to this week's Orange County Real Estate Beat. We love bringing you relevant topics each week. And yes, we are going to be talking about how to be successful um, in a seller's market when you're buying a home. And what is more relevant than that right now, Lane? Uh, we're going to talk about four things. Okay. Number one, be prepared. And when we talk about being prepared, we're going to talk about um, knowing your numbers, your monthly payment. So get with your mortgage broker ahead of time and have them run different scenarios. If I was going to offer this at uh, this particular price and get this particular loan at this at today's current rate, what's that monthly mortgage payment going to be like? Because also, if you're buying a home in an HOA, you're going to have an HOA payment, you're going to have property tax, you're going to have insurance. So be comfortable with that overall number and know the overall monthly nut that makes sense for you. Right on, Lane. And I can't tell you how many times I meet really, really nice folks at an open house, for example, and they'll say, oh my gosh, we love this house. And I'll say, have you gotten pre-qualified by your lender? Do you have an idea what the process is going to be like? And I'll get these blank deer in the head like stairs, stairs. Wonderful, nice people. They won't even have started the process. So please, please, please get with your trusted mortgage advisor, your trusted real estate agent, have a consultation, understand the process before you even look at a house. And what also comes to being prepared, you want to be familiar with the contract, the terms, what type of things are going to be going in the offer, and maybe go review a blank offer with your agent ahead of time. And the reason why is because when you're in a competitive marketplace, there's going to be some re really creative things that you're going to have to do with the terms within the contract to maybe have yours stand out. And if you're already familiar with what types of contingencies they are, time frames, what rent backs are, and you've already run these scenarios ahead of time, you're going to have that confidence. You're going to know exactly what it takes to get, it, get ahead of the game ahead of time and beat out the competition. And to Lane's point, the contracts and the ancillary documents are almost 20 pages right now. And why you need to be educated on those with all the fine print, all the clauses, is because when you get into a competitive offer situation, you're going to be asked to docu-sign all those paper, all those documents in rapid fire succession, often in the case of a couple of hours. You want to have studied those documents so you're very comfortable with them. So when your docu-sign comes across, it's just a matter of a few clicks and you're in the game right away. Okay, number two, and this kind of falls on the uh, on your buyer's agent, but make sure you've got a good buyer's agent that can help you out with this, is the buyer's agent needs to build rapport with the listing agent, and rapport goes a long way, because if the buyer's agent can have these conversations with the listing agent, almost they become friends, five offers on the table, they're probably going to help out their friend or the, the one that they built the most rapport with because they feel the most you know, comfort with this particular buyer's agent. They know that their listing is going to close and they're going to tell them kind of where they need to be, hopefully, to get, to get accepted. You know, it's all about connection. People say they do business with those that they know, like, and trust and understanding that we have a listing agent, a seller's agent, and the buyer and the seller. So you as the buyer are working with your buyer's agent. If that buyer's agent can become trusted by the seller's agent, that seller's agent is going to then communicate to his clients, gee, you know what? I think Lane and Scott with the Sack and Stone team are trustworthy. Their buyers have got their ducks in a row. If we work with them, the transaction is going to go smoothly and it's going to close. We need to build that rapport and trust with those agents so we can get our clients' offers risen to the top. Yep, and those ducks are in a row because we were prepared. But number three, we are going to get creative. So we're going to get creative together. So when I talk about getting creative, we'll start with the terms. There are different things that you have to do with your terms to maybe stand out. Are you removing the appraisal contingency? Are you going so far as removing the loan contingency? We've been seeing that recently. Are you shortening the investigations contingency? For us, sometimes I even have a home, a home inspection already scheduled before we even have an offer accepted because I can relay to the listing agent, hey, I already have a home inspection scheduled tomorrow so I can be able to knock out a five-day investigation contingency if we need to. And so we're getting creative in, in that sense. Exactly. And the reason we want to get creative for those things is we always want to look at it from the seller's and the listing agent's eyes. They want the least amount of hiccups. They want the least passive path of resistance. So if we can remove barriers within our offer, that just, again, is going to make the buyer that much more attractive to the seller to feel, wow, I have fewer risks and I'm going to get closer to my winner, winner, chicken dinner, brass ring at the end of the line, which is closing escrow and putting my money in the bank. And one other thing as far as creativity, escalation clause. Okay. Escalation clause have become a little bit more popular as of today, but I will say this. I think it was about five or six years ago, I read an article about what they were doing East Coast and they were, these escalation clauses were really popular East Coast. And I brought this idea to Scott and the team a long time yeah, ago. You did. And this is before it was popular. And so we are very, very familiar with escalation clauses because yes. we almost are the ones that started it here in California and had it become popular. And now people are finally starting to catch on. But basically, 
basically you're offering a price and you're saying, I will, uh, I'll start at a million dollars and I'll pay $10,000 over your best price up to a certain point. Now, we also work with our in-house attorney here at Seven Gables Real Estate to make sure that there's verbiage in there where it allows them to show proof that they had a better offer. That way you're well protected, but maybe using an escalation clause is another creative way to get your offer accepted. Absolutely. You know, perception is reality. And what we're doing with all of these things, we're just stacking the deck so that we have our clients perceived or whoever you're working with, make sure that you're perceived as the choice, the choice that's going to make it easy for the seller to get what they want at the end of the day. And the last thing that I can say is have patience. Okay. It is a seller's market. So as a buyer, um, you're going to have to show a little patience. Maybe it takes a couple offers before you get one accepted. Um, and if you do not have to buy a home tomorrow, don't overpay. Because you're, we are, and we promise, every one of our buyers that we've helped in the last 24 months, even in this particular market, they've all found a house that they love without having to overpay. That's right. They actually, they actually have, and uh, we'll also say, if you've been out there and you continually lost out and saying, my gosh, I've been one of 30 offers, 40 offers, 20 offers, whatever the number is, you can set yourself up to win if you do have patience. And as Lane says, understand everything. If at first you don't succeed, don't just try, try again. Understand and try to find out why didn't you succeed. Oftentimes, it's not going to be just based on price. Sometimes it will be, but oftentimes it's going to be other things that we've talked about in today's video that you can tweak a little bit and change. So we hope in closing that we've given you more options to put yourself in a position to become successful when it's a seller's market. Absolutely. So now if you're looking at buying a home, hopefully you're a little bit more prepared, a little bit more confident. If you're not, but you know somebody that is, please share this video with them and it's going to help them out. And we think that it Building confidence in our buyers is what it's all about, and we want our buyers to, su to succeed. Absolutely. This was a rapid-fire video, but you can see our passion for helping and wanting people to succeed in today's market. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more valuable information. See you next week. Bye.